about 320. Granddaddy used to say, You can't sing and worship sitting. He used to tell us. Amen. All right. God's amazing grace sent down from heaven, rescued me from death and from shame. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else could heal all our souls' diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He No, not one. 
不画呢。Take your Bible and turn to the book of Acts, chapter number 20. <clears throat> Acts, chapter number 20. While you're turning there, I want to say again, it's good to be in the Lord's house. Hey. Uh, thank God for His goodness towards us. And, uh, all that God has given unto us. Amen. All that he does for us. Hey. You know, uh, a big part, <clears throat> sometimes it takes people years to see this. And it shouldn't be, it shouldn't take us that long to see it, but it does. But throughout the epistles, we read of the things that make up our church doctrine, our beliefs, our faith. How we are to live. Hey. Uh, how we are to walk and please God. But there's probably more said about what God has done for us than it does about how that we should do what we should do for God. And it's because it, it is His gift to us, His great salvation. Hey, uh, is God's gift to us. It is His grace to us. It is what the Lord has done for us. And uh, I'll, I'll show you something tonight uh, by way of introduction. In Acts 20, verse 17, and uh, from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God Amen. and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And uh, so I want to look uh, here tonight. We're still studying about salvation, or as I had mentioned to you, the uh, doctrine of soteriology, this doctrine of salvation. And we've talked about many things concerning Bible salvation. And what we're getting to tonight is repentance and faith repentance and faith now Paul when he uh, from Miletus sent to Ephesus that's the church of the Ephesians you turn to the book of Ephesians and that's who he's talking to here uh, <clears throat> he says when he called uh, and called the elders of the church and when they were come to him uh he said unto them, You know, from the first day that I came into Asia, what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mine and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable to you. Amen. I kept back nothing that was profitable to Amen. you. And he said, but have showed you and have taught you publicly 
and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, Jew and Gentile, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It takes repentance and faith for salvation. Amen. I don't care if you're Jew or Gentile. Listen, salvation has always been by grace through faith. Hey. Even when you look back in the Old Testament to the Jew, listen, their salvation wasn't by the law, never was by the law. How was Abraham justified? By faith. By faith. And it's when they... Uh, repented toward God and they did that through the keeping of uh, those sacrifices and coming before the Lord and uh, you know many things, ordinances that they you know it showed their repentance toward God and Amen. their faith in their God so salvation, listen it's always been the same right. in any dispensation it's the same Adam's salvation and Eve. Listen, it was by grace through faith. Right. It wasn't of works. It's never been of works. Salvation never has been of works. Right. But it is repentance and faith. Now, I said all that. Paul, talking to the church at Ephesus, the elders at Ephesus, the church of the Ephesians, and what I said a little while ago, you can just... Begin to read chapter 1 of the book of Ephesians. And he is constantly showing us the riches of the grace of God. Amen. Right. How that God from the foundation, how he predestinated us. Uh, all of these doctrines that we learn about as the church, as believers. Uh, he's telling them what God has done for us. Hey, what God has done for us. So it is the gift of God. Now it takes both repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance toward God. Now, you can't separate these two. They, they go together. They absolutely run together. They're like two threads bound together. You cannot have faith without repentance. You cannot have repentance without real faith. It, they both are actions that is actually that God grants to us. That God grants to us. Now I know that sounds a whole lot like, uh, you know, some, some people that believe in what we call hardcore predestination, you know, say, well, God, you know, did it, it's not in our hands, and, and well, it isn't in our hands, but God, listen, God so loved the world, and he grants the world repentance. Hey. And he's given to every man a measure of faith. Hey. So God is the giver of salvation. Salvation is of the Lord. Amen. There's nothing that you and I do. Hey. We are the ones that repent and believe. But that, that is not a work. Right. That is not a work. It is an action of what God has presented to us. Right. He gives us space to repent. Does he yes. not? Yes, sir. Hey. God grants us space to repent. Right. So if we really get to repent, it will be because God granted us space to repent. See, not always can man repent. We've preached that in Baptist churches for years. The Spirit of God's got to be dealing with somebody for them to come to the Lord. Hey. You can pray all day long and make all the professions you want. But until God breaks your heart hey. and grants you repentance, God has to give you the yes. invitation. That's right. And when he gives you the invitation, it's in your eternal interest 
to respond to that. And so, uh, repentance toward God, he said. Repentance. What is repentance? Well, Brother Mark, it means to get down on your knees and start calling on God. Well, I mean, that may be some of the action, but real repentance is a change of mind. It's a change of attitude, a change of heart. It's a change of direction. See, I can't say that I've repented if I've not changed direction. I can say I've repented, but that means to change direction. Now, if me and my wife are going down the highway and we're supposed to take this exit going off on this highway and she said, you didn't turn where you were supposed to turn, I can argue with her all day long. Oh, yeah, I did. But if I stayed on the same road, I did not turn. I did not turn. I know that's a carnal illustration, but that's exactly what repentance is, is you and I are going this way, and we turn and start going this way. We're going our way, going the way of a sinner, the way of the children of error, the children of darkness, and we turn and we begin to walk in the light. We begin to walk the way that God said for us to walk. So it's a turning from sin and turning to God. Hey. Not just a turning from sin. Hey. There's a lot of monks have turned from a lot of sin. Okay. But they haven't turned to God. Yeah. And then there are those that say they want to turn to God, but they're not turning from sin. Right. But it's an action of both. Real repentance is turning from sin unto God. Hey. Because, see, my, our sin is what's, or our sin nature, being a sinner, and all the fruit of the sinner is the sins we commit. So we turn from our sin unto God who can do something about our sin. That's why we turn to God. Because only God can do something about our sin. So real repentance, if you really repent, you're turning from your sin and you're turning unto God. Now, I said this, I think it was last week, week, godly sorrow works repentance. Godly sorrow works repentance. In 2 Corinthians 7, 10, the Bible said, For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, Amen. not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Turning over a new leaf is just reformation. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll just straighten up and do better. That's just reformation. Yeah. Anybody can straighten up and do better. Uh, you can be like some of those uh, early Catholic priests who used to, they thought repentance was taking a whip and beating their own flesh so many times in a day is to beat their body under subjection. But the problem is you can't be, just beat out that step maker. You've got a problem. Now we need to bring this body under subjection. But it takes more than you and I whipping ourselves. That's reformation. I'm trying to to change. Now listen, I'm not saying that you shouldn't give your best effort, but the change comes when you turn to God. Not when you're just, well, I'm going to just quit this on my own and That's where a lot of people fall right back into it. Because all it was was reformation. Now listen, this makes repentance a work of God and not man. God must grant us repentance. 
God has to grant us repentance. Uh, again, God gives us space to repent. He gave Jezebel space to repent. She had that opportunity to repent. Man, in the early days, had space to repent. God granted that. God grants us repentance. And so, godly sorrow works it. His goodness leads to it. Romans 2, 4, he said, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. The goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. It's God's goodness that leads us there. Right. Godly sorrow works it. God's goodness leads it. The Lord desires all to repent. Hey. The Bible said in 2 Peter 3, 9 that the Lord is not slack concerning His promises as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, hey. but that all should come to repentance. Hey. But that all should come to repentance. Hey. That's like God so loved the world. Right. Amen? Yeah. Everybody. And now he said, all, that all should come to repentance. Listen, it's, it's not God's will that any should perish. Right. Hey. That's, right. That's not God's will. He wants all to come to repentance. And it's necessary to repent to be saved. Amen. You have to repent. Amen. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, uh, I tell you nay, but except you repent, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. No exceptions. Everybody must repent. Everybody. I had to. The next person has to. We have to repent. We must repent. There, there's no exception. It is a must. Just like when Jesus said, you must be born again. He said, except you repent, it's a must. It has to happen. Yeah. It is an action that has to happen. Now, we're living in a society today where a lot of preachers are taking repentance out of salvation. Wow. They say it's, it's not a part of salvation. We just have faith in God, have faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. And then God works on our lives. No, no. There's no exception. It must happen. Amen. It must happen. Amen. Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So there's repentance. Repentance toward God. It's a gift of God. God grants it to us. It is God that worketh this salvation in us. God grants it to us. Now faith. Faith is de de defined in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hey. The evidence of things not seen. Hey. Hey. Faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in Christ. Yeah. What was it that Jesus told his disciples. Blessed are you because you have seen and believed. More blessed are they that have not seen yeah. and yet believed. Hey. It is the substance of things hoped for. Substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I didn't see Calvary. I didn't see the resurrection. But I believe it. Hey. Amen. And my faith is the evidence of things not seen, but it's also the substance of things hoped for. That what he did on Calvary is going to get us to heaven. Hey. Hey. He's going to produce salvation. Wow. So that's faith. And God grants us that faith. 
It's the Lord's faith. Look at Galatians chapter 2, verse number 16. Turn to Galatians. He said, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Not faith in Jesus Christ. Hey. The faith of Jesus Christ. Now there's a difference. You and I can put faith in Jesus Christ. But we're justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. Hey. It's his faith. It's his faith that saves us. It's his saving faith. Even, uh, he said, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. Twice. Faith of Christ. And not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So there's a difference in our faith in Christ and the faith of Christ. It is the Lord's faith. And it is a gift. I've been saying that. John 3.27. Uh, I think it's either Jesus or John said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Wow. It is given to us from heaven. It is a gift. Ephesians 2.8 said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, hey. it is the gift of God. It is wow. the gift of God. Yeah. Faith is a gift. Faith comes by here. Hey. We have to hear. Now, listen. What of a deaf person? What does it mean to hear? It means to understand the utterance of God. The utterance of God. When the Bible said, so faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That word, word, the word of God means the utterance of God. Not me uttering anything, but God uttering. God uttering. It comes by hearing the uttering of God. And a man that's deaf can hear the uttering of God. You can slap it up on, with a, on a track or on a display and a deaf man can read that and the Holy Spirit can utter the words of God to his name. Right. Now you and I, we hear preachers, evangelists, uh, songs, gospel songs. It's much easier for us because we hear with the ear. But there's a lot of people here with the ear and don't hear. Right. No. You're right. Jesus said, having ears, they hear not. Having eyes, they see not. So faith, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word, every utterance of God. Hey. Whether it's preaching or testifying, God working in our circumstances of, uh, of this life, whatever that it is, every utterance of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every what? Word of God. Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Every utterance of God. Amen. Every one of them. However, God chooses to utter His word. Uh, in old times, the Bible talks about in Hebrews how that, you know, God spake unto or uttered unto, you know, man, you know, by angels and 
that hath in these last days spoken of us by his son. The cross was God screaming through the heavens. I love you. God's great utterance. God calls. Listen, faith comes through a call. We have to be called. We have to be called. Revelation 22 is one of the greatest chapters on the call verse 17 and the spirit and the bride say come Amen. and let him that heareth say come Amen. and let him that is a thirst come yes. and whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely hey. call Romans 8 30 says this Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Right. Yeah. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Hey. Salvation is all a work of God. God predestinated us, called us. If we got saved... He justified us. Hey. Amen. And will glorify us. Yeah. The end of our salvation is our glorification. Hey. We are now justified by faith. Yeah. By faith. By the faith of Christ. Not just necessarily my faith or your faith, but by the faith of Christ. God grants repentance and faith for salvation. You have to realize that. Listen, salvation is of the Lord. Amen. This is the work of God. It is God's work. Amen. Salvation, listen, is not my work. I'm a preacher of the gospel. But your salvation, if you, if you get saved from here, you heard God's word. It was the Holy Spirit that called. It's the, it was God that grants you faith to believe, grants you space to repent, and it's God that will justify you. Amen. It's all of God's working mighty power. All of it. All of our salvation. When Paul said that he had told them, Jew and Greek, I'm glad that he said it that way. Because there are people today that will say, you know, well, these pe this group of people get saved, you know, in a different way than, than this people. Or God required more out of the Jews and not so much out of the Gentiles. They'll take, that, uh, they'll take that verse over there. Listen to me now. They'll take a verse over there that said, all God requires out of Gentiles is for us to abstain from fornication and abstain from uh, bloody meat, things strangled. You know that verse? It's just two or three things, Brother Jerry Lee, and that's all that God requires out of me. Listen, we're, we are the church of Jesus Christ. Hey. The church was a hidden and, and then given by revelation. The church is different from the chosen people of God, the Israelites. God has a plan for them in eternity. God has a plan for Gentiles in eternity that wind up going through the thousand year reign and don't turn back to, to the Antichrist. But then God has something very special. 
in eternity for the church. Hey. You and I are, are kings and priests of God and of Christ. Amen. Totally different. Separate. Saved. I mean, this it's no wonder the angels desire to look into what's going on in salvation and in the church and in the heart of a believer. Hey. Because of what God has prepared for you and I as his people. Amen. We're going to be reigning with him. Hey. We're going to be judging angels. Do you not know that? The Bible tells us those things. I didn't make that up. No, you're not. You shall judge angels. Hey. There are more things than I even can grab with my little old mind that God has specifically for the church in eternity. You and I are going to be like Christ. Hey. Conformed into his image. Likened unto him. Hey. hey, new bodies. Mm -hmm. See, I thought everybody was going to be that way. Well, they're in the no study. I mean, that, uh, you know, these things hadn't been seen in the last, probably the last century that God began to really open up man's mind to the future prophecies and revelation of what God has for his church. And it all starts with our salvation. Our salvation. Amen. And it comes from God. What a great, great gift that God has given us. Amen. 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 I want you to stand. I'm done.